Hello, I'm Matt Mockamer, Associate Cantor at Concordia Theological Seminary in Fort Wayne, Indiana. In our previous worship podcast, Cantor Kevin Hildebrand explored some ideas for specific Sundays in the church year as we head into the summertime. Uh, today, I'd like to share some thoughts regarding liturgical variety during this same season. We are now in the season after Pentecost, the time when the church focuses on the teachings of Jesus. It's appropriate that the season is green. It's a time when we as the church reflect on what Christ has done for us, but we especially pay attention to his teaching, seeking by the power of the Holy Spirit to grow more like him. The season after Pentecost is quite long. It makes up roughly half of the entire church year. One of the ways to mark time throughout the season of Pentecost is to explore some liturgical variety, within reason, of course. One easy way to do this is to vary the liturgical setting that you use on Sunday morning in your churches, um, perhaps using a different setting of the divine service. While changing the setting of the service every week can be pretty confusing for most parishioners, altering the setting of the service every few months can be refreshing and help your people to focus on different aspects of the service and of the readings. This year, the season after Pentecost extends from Sunday, May 27th, all the way to Sunday, December 2nd. Perhaps consider doing one setting of the divine service for the summer, so June, July, and August of 2018, and then another setting in the fall, which would be September, October, and November of 2018. If you're not able to change the setting of the divine service, or if you would prefer to do one setting for the entire season, uh, consider the liturgical variety that's baked right into the setting of the divine service itself, specifically during the service of the word. Oftentimes, we seem to do the divine service in one specific way, neglecting the other options because we haven't really taken the time to explore what that would mean. So let's take a few moments to do that this morning. At the beginning of the service, a hymn of invocation or an opening hymn may be sung. However, if you look in the hymnal, it says may be sung. So this is not absolutely necessary. A service may begin immediately with the confession and the absolution. Following the confession and absolution, there's another area for some variety. It's suggested that the congregation sing the introit, the psalm, or an entrance hymn. If your congregation is used to singing an opening hymn of invocation, then going straight from the confession and absolution to the Kyrie, one option to explore would be beginning the service immediately with the confession and absolution, singing the opening hymn as an entrance hymn instead, and then proceeding with the Kyrie and the Gloria. As the service moves into the readings for the day, there are more options to explore. In between the Old Testament and the Epistle reading, there is the option to sing or speak the Psalm of the Day or the Gradual. Both of these texts are chosen specifically for each Sunday in the church year. Um, they're available in this book, The Propers of the Day. Um, all those texts are there for you, or through the Lutheran Service Builder software. Both of these can be good options between the readings, and it's good for the congregation to be familiar with both types of texts throughout the church year. Obviously, um, the Psalms are all from the book of Psalms, and they're a little bit longer, more extensive. The graduals are usually shorter texts. They can be portions of Psalms. They can be portions from other parts of Scripture or even liturgical texts. Finally, we come to the Alleluia and the verse. In divine service settings 1 and 2, there is a setting of the Alleluia that includes a generic verse that can be used throughout the church year. Alleluia, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. Alleluia. However, in divine service settings 3 and 4, the Alleluias are provided with options to sing the appointed verse of the day. You can find that, again, in this resource, the Lutheran Service Builder software. You can even find it in the back of the organist version of the liturgy. So here you have another opportunity for variety within the service. The Alleluia can be sung as printed in the hymnal using the generic verse or just singing the Alleluia refrain in Divine Service 3 and 4 or by utilizing the proper verse of the day. This can help to intensify the focus and preparation for the gospel reading that immediately follows. 
For more information on how to implement singing the Alleluia and the verse specifically, be sure to check out Kevin Hildebrand's podcast from March 2018. All right, um, there should be something popping up here on the screen. You can see here on the screen some possible suggestions on how one might utilize the variety found in the service of the word over the season of Pentecost. You'll notice that in this fictional scenario, each way of conducting the service of the word remains the same for several months. This gives the people a chance to get used to doing the service in a certain way and really appreciate it. This is by no means a a prescriptive way of doing the service, but just some thoughts for you to consider as a way to break up this longer season of the church year. So if you look in the summer, um, we're not going to sing an opening hymn at this church. We're going to go straight from the prelude, um, you know, played by the organ, the piano, or instrumentalists, right to the confession and absolution. Then we'll use an entrance hymn, go through the Kyrie, Gloria, Salutation and Collect, Old Testament reading, and then we'll do the Psalms in the summertime. Um, And then we'll use the Alleluia as printed in the hymnal. When we move into the fall, we'll bring back the opening hymn. So after the prelude is finished, we'll sing a hymn of invocation, then the confession and absolution, and now we'll explore those intro texts after the confession and absolution. Between uh, the first and second reading, then we'll have the gradual. Since we're doing the longer intro it, um, we'll use the gradual in between the readings, which is a little bit of a shorter text, and then use the proper verse with the alleluias. Um, Again, just some options for liturgical variety that's organized and intentional and helps your people to really explore uh, the gifts that we have in the divine service through the service of the word. As always, the key here is repetition. Whether you are changing the elements of the liturgy that you're using or whether you're doing a completely different setting of the liturgy, your your parishioners parishioners will learn it best with time and intentional repetition. God's richest blessings to you as you continue to proclaim the gospel of Jesus Christ in word and song throughout these summer months. Thank you.